Just wanted to make a quick video today celebrating the great migration from Twitter to Mastodon. You may have heard King Elon of Musk is buying Twitter for $44 billion, because obviously that's the best way to spend $44 billion, and he's got all these plans for Twitter. Hmm. He's hinted at putting in an edit button so you could go back and change your tweets to pretend you hadn't written what you wrote, or so we end up retweeting something that we hate. He said he wants to make Twitter more transparent, which sounds good, right? Because transparent, that's one of those good words. Until you realize it means users will be forced to verify their identity. I would never do that, and no one on Twitter should be forced to reveal their name or location for their own safety. Elon Musk is the kind of guy people call a genius because he has a lot of money and can do genius things with it. This is a guy who the media love to say believes in free speech, but obviously not in the freedom of his employees to unionize or say anything about it to the press. So his Twitter will be as free as a, 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 as a Tesla union employee. If he cared about freedom, he wouldn't force people to verify their identities online. Transparency is great for people who can count on being protected by the police and so on, which is why rich people like Elon are so keen on it. For the rest of us, it's doxing ourselves to a giant media corporation. So what are some of the things he said? Asked by interviewer Chris Anderson about how censorship should be handled, he said, Twitter should match the laws of the country, and in my view there's an obligation to do that. Okay, so we're subject to whatever the law says, and if the law restricts your speech in any way, well, he's just okay with that. Twitter has become a kind of de facto town square, so it's really important that people have the reality and the perception that they're able to speak freely within the bounds of the law. Mm, so you're able to speak freely as long as what you're saying doesn't upset Elon or any section of the state. Yeah, and so if you... If you're not going to say anything controversial or, or subversive, then yeah, go ahead, verify yourself. What harm could it do? Then he says, My strong intuitive sense is that having a public platform that's maximally trusted and broadly inclusive is extremely important to the future of civilization. So for the sake of civilization itself, we have to let Elon buy Twitter and do what he wants with it. Those are some really well-chosen words. He's saying you should trust a platform that won't let you speak anonymously, bows to local legal restrictions, and is wholly owned by one of the richest guys in the world. That's not the public square I want. There, There is no more online public square, if there ever was. Let's read out a couple of the tweets I've seen on this topic. The richest guy on the 2021 Forbes 400 owns the Washington Post. Number two now owns Twitter. Number three owns Facebook. Numbers five and six started Google. Numbers four and nine started Microsoft. Number 10 owns Bloomberg. Free speech? You decide. What Elon Musk is doing is what plutocrats have been doing using money to buy power and power to protect their money, taking control of media to rig the discourse and hedge against resentment, and branding themselves the solution to the very problem they are. To continue on that, it's not Twitter that's broken, it's the internet. At every step of the way, we've let the digital commons be overrun by corporate interests, and now we stand inside each of our fenced-off spaces, yelling across the divide, hoping it's better in someone else's pasture. And some kind of strange tweets about the potential and the, the hope that Elon inspires in people. 
In principle, says Jack, I don't believe anyone should own or run Twitter. Oh, wow, great. He's got some good communist creds. It wants to be a public good at a protocol level, not a company. Solving for the problem of it being a company, however, Elon is the singular solution I trust. I trust his mission to extend the light of consciousness. What? <laughs> Has he been doing that? Because cause he gives a few TED Talks here and there? People seem to think that because he has a few imaginary schemes that may one day be implemented at the cost of only hundreds of billions of dollars, that somehow he's this incredible genius that needs to just have all the money so he can save us from climate change. This, folks, is extremely naive thinking. You could do a lot more for climate change by stealing every dollar that he's ever made. Anyway, Elon's gonna take over, and no matter what he does, Elon Stan's gonna stand. So I guess it's a good thing there is an alternative to bird sight. That alternative is Mastodon. I can't tell you everything about Mastodon, but I can recommend that you start an account there. So if you wanna start, you can go to joinmastodon.org. It's pretty simple. Um, all you really gotta do is like follow the instructions, get started, choose a community. Uh, they also call it an instance. It's pretty simple, this whole part, you know, you read it over. Um, you just kind of choose a place to rest your head in a sense, you got to kind of choose one of these instances to join, and you can, like, still see people in other instances and join, you know, uh, whichever one you want, join others, leave the one you're in and join another. Although, if I'm not mistaken, when you leave one instance, you lose all the stuff that you, that you posted to it. So, um, you know, be a little careful about that. Um, again, I'm not an expert on exactly how all this stuff runs. As you can see, it's not that different from Twitter. You know, here you post toots instead of tweets. This. And then a toot. <laughs> Which also means fart. But anyway, so much the better, right? Um, and, of course, I can just delete it if I like. Right. It's got a couple of small advantages over Twitter, or again, as they call it here, bird site. You can pin as many pins as you want. In other words, like on Twitter, you can, you can put one pin, but uh, here you can really put as many as you want. You could pin all these things if you wanted to. Well, I could. And, uh, Here's me, so uh, feel free to follow me, you know. This is how you would find me if you had to, uh, if you had to look for me at a Taoist. Todon is the, just the instance that I'm on. I don't even know if it's still possible to join it. I couldn't find it when I was looking for it before. Um, there's a, right now, Macedon's got a pretty big influx of, uh, of new people, so it's possible it's just not showing up yet. If you want to download an app for it, for your phone, there's, uh, well, there's a couple of them, if I'm not mistaken, but I've been using this one called Tusky. See, Tusky for Mastodon. Maybe this Tusky Nightly is also good. I don't know. That's what I've been using. That's all I know. Now, Mastodon has its disadvantages. To me, uh, the first is there, there just aren't as many people there. So unlike Twitter, it takes me a bit longer to find the kind of posts that I'm looking for, which, by the way, are posts that teach me something, mostly. But the, that problem's been mitigated over the past few days as people have been pouring in from Twitter. 
but there are other disadvantages. Uh, Mastodon has always been the place for hackers, anti-authoritarians, anarchists, and rebels, and as such, you can bet it's crawling with feds. <laughs> looking for people like us. And in fact, there might be whole instances created by feds for surveillance purposes. We don't really know because it's not transparent that way. Again, it shouldn't be, but the lack of transparency means anyone can start an instance. All I'm saying is be careful. It's still online, so it's not safe. And I'm not saying you should necessarily deactivate your Twitter account, because it's still Twitter, and we can still spread the message of freedom there. But now you've got an alternative for when Twitter really begins to suck.